Hey sim racing enthusiasts, Todd Bettenhausen here. I'm with my brother Kerry this time and after I've done all that work showing you guys this big fancy triple projector cockpit that I put all this planning and work into. And money. <laughs> Gee thanks. Uh, here we are with something totally different and something really exciting. Um, something that's kind of old but new again. Virtual reality has made its way to sim racing and iRacing is leading the way. We have here an Oculus Rift development kit um, on loan thanks to the generosity of an Ohio iRacer. One state over. I've got it set up here. We did a lot of playing with it last weekend at the IndyCar race at Mid-Ohio. Had a great time with it. Now we've got it at home and we're doing some more thorough experimentation. There's my PC that I built to run iRacing. There's the control box for the Rift. Connections to the PC and the headset. And here we are in the cockpit of the Dallara and you can see that I've got my displays cloned and this is actually what each eye would see but it's warped and the lenses unwarp those images and create a separate image for each eye um, you perceive distance by crossing your eyes just as you do in the real world you cross your eyes to look at objects that are that are rendered closer to your viewpoint so Kerry has run five or six laps at, at Elkhart Lake here in the Dallara and I'm gonna go ahead and and have Kerry click the mouse there and, and roll that replay and then hit the space bar and we'll get rid of the we'll get rid of the UI. And I'm gonna stick this camera right inside the rift. And that is not a bad representation of what you see. Of course you see everything at the top and bottom also uh, and you can see here as I I'm moving the display around and I can see all around this car just as if I were in the actual car turning my head and now we're out on the course on cold tires and we'll just watch a lap see what it looks like You almost have to train yourself to look through the apexes to the next corner because running with static monitors, you don't really do that. You move your eyes. Well, here you have to turn your head and uh, take some getting used to. I didn't run these laps with the Rift. I ran these on my rig at my place, which is a triple monitor, 179 degree FOV. And uh, running with the Rift is a completely different experience, certainly more natural, more like what we do in the real world. but. Still takes some getting used to compared to running the, the triple monitor rig that, that I'm accustomed to. Now we're recording this video in 1080p, 30 frames per second. Um, the Rift here is, is running at a much higher frame rate, probably something around 200 frames per second. Uh, you can see that the video quality is relatively poor, and that is because this is, of course, not a consumer product. This is a development kit. Um, it's running at a at a very low resolution. The monitor is 1280 by 800 and that's of course divided into two eyes. So you can see that when you look off into the distance objects are, are pretty blurry. You don't you certainly don't have the ability to pick things out uh, nearly as far away as you do with a good good sharp monitor. Okay so now we're uh, we're completing our first lap and I'm going to do some things that you can't do in a race car. But I'm going to show you just how flexible this thing is. And if you ever wonder why this thing could be disorienting to people, I mean you can put yourself into some some impossible positions and when we uh when we switch to replays here in a second, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Of course with all that safety equipment on, you couldn't uh you couldn't make that kind of move in a race car. But I'm going to go ahead and have Kerry click the C button now, and we're going to start switching cameras. So go ahead. Okay, this is your... And I don't have my cameras memorized, but I suppose this is probably TV1. And just like... Just like being at the racetrack, you can turn your head and follow the car. Go ahead, Kerry, switch cameras. Or you can stare blankly off into space if you're not paying any attention to the race. That'll come in handy for wives and girlfriends. Go ahead, Kerry, switch cameras. I 
And we're seeing a little bit of strange artifacting there. At the okay, go ahead and stand this one for a while. We're seeing some strange artifacting there at the center of the screen, a little bit of aberration. Uh, I assure you that's not present when you're actually using the Rift. But here's where you can see where people have begun to get disoriented. I mean, you can do some really, really strange things while you're rifting. Yeah, we're we're following the car and we're we're looking all over the place. The camera's in the in the normal place, but being that the head tracking works, you can uh you can look anywhere. Here we are in the uh, in the blimp, and this will look really familiar to anybody who's uh, skydived or flown a powered parachute like I have. I got the immediate sensation the first time I did this that I was falling, and you know when I see this kind of thing in real life, I'm I'm used to having some sort of airframe <laughs> as a point of reference. Well, no, uh, just kind of hanging out in 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 space, enjoying the view, <laughs> and way down there is. Road carousel. America, there's the carousel. Road America, there's the Speedville Bridge right at the right at the center of the screen. That's a familiar landmark. Okay, Gary, Gary, go ahead and switch cameras. Here we are, one of our chase cameras. And uh, supposing you're spotting for somebody and you want to see how close that guy is. Hey, he's right behind you. Kind of upside down, but yeah, sure, you can have a look. I just, can just turn I just, I just, I just pointed the, I just pointed the rift backwards and and down between my knees. Or you can turn around and do it the way up. No, no. Of course you can, but if you're spotting, it's a hell of a lot faster to do what I just did, and that's exactly what I did when I was spotting for you last week. <laughs> so you guys can see how damn much fun this is. I mean, I'm just, I'm just having a blast sitting here playing with it, much less uh, actually using it. Okay, Carrie, go ahead and switch cameras again. Yeah, I just did. Okay, this is our our chopper cam. This one this one can get kind of disorienting. I'll wait till we get out into the into the opening by the pits. Yeah, when I get the when I get the camera close, I see that that little bit of uh, aberration there at the center. Okay, here we are at the pit entrance, and we can watch all this fun stuff go by. Well, the, the blimp might be up there somewhere. I think he just flew into the bridge. It's like the Superman view. Yeah. Oh. It's making me hungry. I think he just went splat on the Sargento bridge. cheese is making me hungry. Okay, Carrie, go ahead and switch camp. This is pretty cool. Not only can we look back, but now we're out ahead of the car pretty unique viewpoint. This is not something you're going to see every day in iRacing. We're actually out ahead of the car, probably seven or eight feet off the racetrack, getting a bird's eye view of a lap at Road America. I gotta be careful here, I'm winding myself up in my cable, I could ruin the video by unplugging it. We'll stick with this a little bit, it's kind of interesting. At least by having the car in the background, you can't really see how bad my driving is. <laughs> and this really works remarkably well to stick this. Uh, it's a Samsung Galaxy Note 2. I'm not. I didn't do anything tricky with the with the camera. I didn't zoom in or zoom out or any of that stuff. I just stuck it in the in the rift and being careful to stay off the lenses because this is a borrowed unit but it's remarkably close to what you see. Um, it's kind of like looking through a wide-angle pair of binoculars. Um, if you set the rift up properly and you get the lenses close to your eyes you see a black periphery kind of like we see it at the three o'clock and nine o'clock position here in this video but you, you barely see it. It's, it's way out away from what you're paying attention to and of course uh, you can see all the way around. We can see you know up top and, and down below which are, are cut off here because of the aspect ratio of my of my video camera. All right, Carrie, go ahead. There's and I, yeah, I I did some playing with uh, with near plane bias, and 
that's what that little piece of garbage is. So go ahead and ignore that. This is pretty cool. We're on the back of the gearbox now and talk about a uh, unique perspective. Is that cool or what? Okay, this must be the gyro cam now. That looks a lot like the camera pod that you see during television coverage. Yeah, that is pretty much exactly where the where the on-car cameras are located in real life. Okay, go ahead and go with one more here. Okay, this is cool. Go ahead and stick with this one for a second. We're right inside that left mirror. You can see the car is comprised of surface models, and uh, you know we're seeing some clipping in the, the near part of the view, which just goes with the territory of being able to have a, a, a camera point. Check this out. This is cool. Check that out. <laughs> All this made possible by the fact that uh, that iRacing does indeed render a, a seamless world while you're driving, 360 degrees all around the car. In fact, I would imagine that you could do some pretty tricky stuff putting the car on the putting the camera on the bottom of the car and watching the car hit the racetrack and all that kind of stuff. But you get the uh, this is my inlet, by the way. You get the idea here. That's a neat view. All the camera positions are where they where they normally are. Now there's a little bit more of that that near plane stuff. I don't know if there's an antenna on the car there or what. Go ahead and take a look at the mirrors here. They're they're not very clear. Um, this thing will benefit greatly from from increased resolution, for sure. One thing I noticed while driving is that if your body position doesn't match the rendered driver's position in the sim, it feels kind of strange. Uh, my seating position in my sim rig is more like a GT car than an Indy car, so my legs are more under me than they are in the sim, and. Uh, you almost feel somewhat disconnected from your virtual body from the waist down unless you match the uh, the body position in the real world with that of the sim. Same way with the steering wheel position. If the steering wheel in your hands isn't lined up with the steering wheel in the sim, it somewhat uh, disturbs the uh, the immersion factor. It kind of breaks you out of reality. Yeah, when, when mm -hmm. those two are lined up right on top of each other like we were able to do with the sim raceway wheel where we could hold it where we wanted to, it really made a big difference because it really snaps you right into the simulation. But when you're sitting there in the cockpit, you can point right to the top of your radio antenna and, and space and say it's right there and point to the guy sitting on the scoring stand on the war wagon there and the, the whole nine yards. I mean, it's it, it's very much like being in the real world. You just feel like you can just reach out and touch the inside of the tub. Oh, the way the shadows play around in there and everything, it's... Uh... It's very convincing. Uh, I have good vision in only one eye, and just as a, a, a data point for all you guys who are concerned that this technology may, may be passing you by, don't be concerned. Uh, it's just like closing one eye in real life. You, you don't really miss much at all. You lose a little bit of the depth of the, the whole experience, but you, uh, you really see things just fine, even with only one eye. In fact, uh, this is only one camera looking in one eye. So there you go. Um, if you can't tell, we're we're really excited about this. Uh, can't wait for the uh, a higher resolution consumer model to come along. Um, in the meantime, you know, if you just can't wait, the developer kit's awesome. Three hundred bucks. You can see a pretty good representation of what you're going to get here. It's not certainly no match for the the clarity of a good monitor setup, but certainly has a lot of other attributes that can kind of make you forget about that in a big hurry. 
So again, Carrie and Todd Bettenhausen here playing around with an Oculus Rift and iRacing's excellent implementation. One of the first games out of the gate with really, really great support for the Rift. And uh, this is the future, folks, and the future is bright. So we'll see you next time.